Guys, it is a new year. It is January 2023. It is freezing out here, but I am so excited because it is Saturday night. That's right guys, it is Saturday night. It is time to make some awesome snacks and rent some awesome videos. So we are at Family Video in Perry Township. But the only thing is, even though the light is still on, the store is closed. What a strange sight to see. The Family Video sign is blazing above the Marco's Pizza sign. But the store itself is actually closed. Not only this family video, but every family video under the sun, on the face of the earth, is now closed. Wiped off the face of the earth and closed for good. Marco's Pizza is hustling and bustling, and the obelisk is still ablaze outside the family video. But it is 100% closed. What a sad sight, guys. This is one of the stores that I used to come out to to film Saturday Night Snack in a Movie every week. And as you can see, it is now 100% empty on the inside. And it's not just family video. See more video, Video Safari, Video Time, even Blockbuster. Every single one of them is closed except for the last blockbuster in Bend, Oregon. But we are heck and gone from Bend, Oregon. And now one of my favorite parts of these videos is gone. To go to the video store, browse around, look at the videos, the front and the back of each one, and pick an awesome one or a whole stack to bring home and have a movie night. Ah, yes, when I found out they were all closed, my little heart broke. So I bought a house and built my own. guys what I've been working on for the past couple of months and why you haven't seen me very much on YouTube my very own video store slash home theater we got the red carpet movies wall to wall 85 inch 4k TV Polk surround sound movie posters from my favorite movies Harry Potter's platform nine and three quarters movie posters snacks galore candy galore drinks galore popcorn galore we even have an enormous M&M from family video and Mike and Sully's door from monsters incorporated and when it's time for the movie the lights go out. We've got plenty of pillows and blankets on the 15-foot leather couch that fully reclines so everybody can watch the movie in pure ecstasy. And if it gets cold, we turn up the heat. Okay, guys, let's just stop, come down to earth for a minute, and appreciate the awesomeness of this room. Seriously, I love this place so much. So I'm gonna be making a video completely dedicated to everything in this room, putting it all together, building the shelves, buying the DVDs, you know, making the signs where I got a lot of this stuff. But we're gonna take a few minutes here 
just so I can talk to you guys about that and you can get a first look. So when we first moved into this house, this room was just a big, empty, dingy basement room. The walls were like a dark blue, I think. The floor was gray, and it had some kind of a weird, like, dance mat on it, because I think the person who lived here previously was like, I don't know, a ballet dancer or something, because there was also like a ballet bar on this wall here. There were giant mirrors on this wall. It was dark and dirty and there were spider webs everywhere. The only thing I haven't touched down here yet is this area here and the stairs, which you can see it's still really dirty around here. It needs a lot of work. But I have changed like 100% of everything in this room, guys. When I was out filming Spirit Halloweens for three months, I had my son come in here and paint all of this take everything off the walls, paint in my office, clean up all the dirt and cobwebs, pull up the flooring, and just get it prepared for when I got home so I could work on it. And when I got home, I went nuts. The first thing I did was buy this giant TV. It's an 85 inch TV. I got it at Sam's Club and it barely even fit in the back of the Hummer let alone down the steps and around that corner. I searched all over the internet looking for shelves that I could use to put my DVDs on, and I really could find nothing, so I had to build these myself. I just took a longer piece and a smaller piece, attached them together, stuck them on the wall, screwed them in, and I even used caulking so that it would come out that much nicer. This brick was all white, and I spent an entire day repainting it with multiple colors of red and brown to make it actually look like real brick. I mean, it is real brick, but it was painted white, so I needed to make it look like it was legit colors of brick again. You can even see at the bottom here where I need to put the trim on so you can see where it used to be white down there. I knew that I wanted it to feel like an actual rental store, so I got this guy off Facebook Marketplace, which you may recognize from my old videos in Family Video because Family Video had these sitting around the store as well as the Sour Patch Kids with these big boxes on top to hold all the candy. And just as a throwback to the Sour Patch Kids too, I put the Sour Patch Kids in the candy $1 sign. I have my hat and my bag from the last Blockbuster in Bend, Oregon. On his other hand here is the New York hat, Gordy's New York hat from Stand By Me. Not his real hat, but that's the one that I wore in the video when I filmed the filming locations of Stand By Me. In every video rental store, you always have the rack of hanging chips as well as the box of posters that are for sale, posters that they used to have on the wall. And if you look at the top, they always had the name written down on those. Dumbo, Little Mermaid, Snow White. And the box is always like crudely wrapped with another old poster. I had to have a Coca-Cola fridge but I couldn't find one online that was affordable. Plus I was kind of worried that it wouldn't work. So I got on Lowe's and I ordered this black fridge that is made specifically for drinks. The, uh, the glass front there, and there's a little light on the inside here. So that holds like 108 drinks in there. And then I ordered this handle from eBay and the decals from Amazon, and I just applied those myself. This is a placemat that I found at, I don't know, like a, an extras, a junk store or something. After I painted these bricks, the only thing I could think of was platform nine and three quarters from the Harry Potter movie. So I ordered the Harry Potter uh, poster off of eBay and Marion got me this light for Christmas. I grew up in a time when VHS was the big thing and that's what you were renting at all the rental stores. So I had to have a VHS section and I just happened to find this Titanic poster on uh, Marketplace for 10 bucks. So I bought that and like two days later, I found the brand new unopened Titanic two VHS set, just like on the poster for a dollar at Goodwill. This area back here had to have seating and I had 15 feet exactly. So I looked everywhere for seating and I found this at Value City Furniture. It is just like two inches short of 15 feet. 
all four of these recline. We have uh, the drink holders between each. We also have this that opens up between each one, so you can put stuff in there, as well as this drawer down here. And how in the world did I get this thing down here? Well, it comes apart. Each of the consoles is one separate piece, and all the chairs are separate pieces, and the backs come off of each of those as well. So they came down and around the corner very easily. My very favorite Indiana Jones movie is Temple of Doom, which Marion also loves. So I hung the poster up there, and when I saw that I had this space over here, I was like, yep, I gotta get some props. So I ordered the official Indiana Jones hat, the whip, and this diary here. To make my labels for family fun, adventure, action, kids, VHS, I actually printed these film strips off the internet. I bought the sticky letters from Michael's Craft Store, and then I used old DVDs, which I have replaced with uh, Blu-rays to put on the corners. The VHS and the kids one here, I just used a hole punch and then I use these little things that screw into the ceiling to attach those. If you look behind these uh, videotapes up here, you'll see the videotapes themselves are actually in these plastic boxes like you used to get them from the rental store. And I ordered a bunch of these little Be Kind Rewind stickers from uh, eBay, and I actually have those on each of the VHS tapes. And of course, I have a stack of VHS tapes sitting right there because back in the day, whenever you went to the store, you'd rent four or five of them, bring them home, and you always had a stack of videotapes sitting there that you were working your way through. I asked Marion for blankets for Christmas, so she got me a whole bunch of throw blankets to use down here. These pillows, I definitely wanted pillows down here, and I saw these at Target, and it reminded me of how on VHS tapes you always had to fix the tracking. So you got this jumping thing, you got these little lines, and that just reminded me of the tracking on VHS tapes. So I had to get those. They're big, they're comfy. I have a couple other pillows here as well. Marion got me this one for Christmas. Now I've seen several people build these video stores in their basement, and they always either come up with their own name or they say they built a blockbuster. So I went back to my roots and <laughs> for years I was partial to video time. So I thought I could totally make that. I built the little box around it with cardboard and duct tape. Again, I printed that stuff off the internet and used the sticky letters. I printed the little clock off the internet and then I used chasing LED lights so you can turn it on. Backlit movie posters are really expensive. They're like almost 200 bucks a piece for good ones. So what I did was I just built a little frame on the back of these posters. In fact, I can show you on the back of the Spy Kids poster here. That's what it looks like. And I used LED lighting on here as well. And the same remote also controls that. It lights up and it makes the light come out from behind the poster on the wall. So when it's hanging on the wall, See, that illuminates behind the frame. It throws some light up there and around the top of the DVDs there. And when you have all your lights off watching a movie, it's just a nice little glow instead of having it completely pitch black. And I love the whole place, but quite possibly my favorite thing is the little cove back here for all the kids' movies and the Monsters, Inc. door that I built right there that goes into my office. We got the Monsters, Inc. poster right here. And if you'll notice on all the posters, they're not from the theater. They're the ones that say coming to DVD and video. I love that little touch to make it more like a video rental store. But right beside the poster, we have the Monsters, Inc. door. Now I chose to do the blue door instead of Boo's door because I'm a dude. <laughs> Boo's door would have been perfect, but yeah, I'm a guy, so it would have been weird to have a pink door with flowers on it. So I just went with the blue door like you see in the intro in the movie. I bought this plastic mat from Lowe's and I painted the yellow stripes on there, painted the door blue. I cut this out of a piece of flooring that I was using upstairs throughout the house, drew the little uh, details on there. And I attached this tap light, which I don't have hooked up right now. 
because I actually have red ones coming in the mail today because in the movie, when the monster is in the door, in a kid's bedroom, scaring him, the light is red. And we can't forget about the long red carpet. I originally was not gonna put any other kind of a carpet down here because this is brand new carpet. I just had it installed by Empire, but somehow, I got a little black mark on the carpet down here. I think it's from a permanent marker and I couldn't get it up and it was ugly. So I went online and started looking and I'm like, how appropriate is a long red carpet in here? I kind of wanted blue actually because there's a lot of blue in this room. The labels, all the Blu-rays here, the Monsters Inc. door, the Blockbuster video things. But a red carpet made so much more sense because it's like they rolled out the red carpet for the premiere. I also tried to keep everything in here pretty much family friendly. So you've probably noticed that I don't have a horror section in here, but I really want one. So I've considered extending this into my office, building some more shelves in there and having a giant horror section in my office. And I basically did that because because not everybody's into horror. And especially when Marion comes down here, she doesn't want to see that stuff. Or if the littles come over or my parents, I don't want them to be exposed to that stuff. I love horror, so it works for me. But if I put it in my office, it's much better than having it out here. Kind of like in the video stores where you have the curtain that you're not supposed to go behind unless you're an adult. And I do still have some things I'm working on, mainly this back wall here. I love the giant Titanic poster, but I think eventually I want to replace it with other posters, probably like four or five of the smaller size posters here that you can actually see the whole thing. Just to get something else on the wall here so it wasn't empty, I framed one of my Saturday Night Snack and a Movie t-shirts, and I was trying so hard to figure out what to put in this frame and I couldn't think of anything. I didn't have any more posters. I couldn't print something off the internet. And then I'm like, wait a minute, let's just leave this picture in because what could be more appropriate than a reference from my favorite movie, it came with the frame. Okay guys, so now that we're all through that, let me tell you about the movie for tonight. The Mitchells versus The Machines. I am so excited for you guys to see this movie. One of the best animated movies I have seen in a long time. The description on the back reads, An old school father and his plugged in filmmaker daughter struggle to relate as their family embarks on a road trip to her new college. Their drive is interrupted by a machine apocalypse that threatens to tear these unlikely heroes apart unless they can find a way to join forces and save humanity. And that they do. <laughs> this movie is absolutely hilarious. I don't want to tell you guys too much about it in case you haven't seen it, but there is a dog you're gonna love. There are two robots who go rogue, and there is one ginormous Furby. If you guys do not have this movie available to you on DVD or Blu-ray, it is on Netflix right now, as well as plenty other streaming platforms. So just get on Google and search it up and you will find The Mitchells vs. The Machines. And with that said, it is time to get down to our snack. <laughs> with that said, we know our movie, we've seen the movie room, it is time to get down to the snack for the night. And that is going to be candy colored kettle corn. Now, if you search this online, you're gonna have to look up rainbow popcorn, but I just thought that was kind of boring, so I like to call it candy-colored kettle corn. So all we need for this snack is popcorn, sugar, coconut oil, and gel food coloring. You also need four small mixing containers, a pan with a lid, and a couple of spoons to mix with. So guys, the reason I chose this snack tonight is because this movie is so colorful that I had to have something colorful with it. So in addition to our candy-colored kettle corn, we are gonna have Little Hugs Fruit Barrels. These will go along perfect with our popcorn, and they come in raspberry, grape, I don't even remember. <laughs> Raspberry, kiwi strawberry, grape, and they come in fruit punch, and they come in fruit punch, strawberry, grape, and uh, why can't I remember it? Fruit punch, raspberry, strawberry, and grape. And they come in fruit punch, strawberry, raspberry, and grape. Now obviously we're gonna be popping popcorn, so we wanna prepare everything over here that we're gonna need by the stove. Now we're gonna 
<laughs> now we're going to be mixing our sugar with our gel food coloring and that's what's going to color our popcorn. Since we have four colors here, we need four mixing containers. We need two tablespoons of sugar in each container and two drops of each color. Mix each of those up with your spoon. Actually, a fork would work much better. So to get this going, we're gonna need one tablespoon of coconut oil and two tablespoons of the popcorn. Now instead of trying to sit here pouring two tablespoons out every time you wanna use it, I'm gonna use another one of these and just fill it up so all I have to do is dig in. We're gonna turn this on to a medium high. Now as soon as those two kernels pop, We'll know to mix in the other popcorn and the sugar. So in the end, you get a kitchen full of smoke and a whole bunch of popcorn that sticks together and didn't really turn out colored. The one step that I got wrong is I forgot. You're supposed to get a tray like this, put some parchment paper on it, and straight out of the pan, you pour your popcorn on there so that it can dry for a few minutes and won't stick together so bad. Once it sits for a minute, you can actually crunch it and it'll fall apart pretty easy. But remember, there's sugar on there, so it sticks together. As far as the color goes, you can see a little bit of red in there. You can see some green and some yellow. I don't really see any blue, but I'll tell you one thing. Mm-hmm. It tastes good. So if this looks more colorful in the thumbnail, I photoshopped it. <laughs> yeah, there's not much color to it, but it sure is delicious. All right, guys, well, there you have it. We have our movie, The Mitchells vs. the Machines. We have our attempt at the candy-colored kettle corn, which is not very colorful, but tastes delicious. And we have our colored hugs drinks. I'm gonna go kick back and watch the movie, and I hope you guys are gonna do the same. Join me next Saturday and every Saturday after that for another awesome movie and another awesome snack that we might not mess up every time.